Hi, I'm Tessa with Connecticut Sea Grant and Yukon Extension. Today we're visiting a farm that uses floating bags to grow small seed oysters. Later on in the season, when those oysters are larger and less vulnerable to predation, the oysters are planted on the sea floor, where they'll remain until harvest time. Let's dive in and take a look at what's involved in this type of hybrid aquaculture operation. So what we have here is a floating bag nursery system. It's seasonal. It's designed to protect juvenile oysters during high predator season, let them grow to the point where they can live on the bottom on the actual bed. The process starts actually in a hatchery. I buy four to six millimeter seed, which is really teeny tiny. It goes into an upweller until ideally it will sit on a 12 millimeter screen. You want to get a nice clean grade so that it's not, you don't have smaller ones mixed in. And you can always tell when you deploy a bag, if you're getting little seed that's falling out through the grid, you know that it wasn't clean enough. So you want to flip them so that they reorient themselves. They, they, they mix out their position in the bag. So, so you're changing around the optimum feeding locations. And you also get to knock all the little oysters that are trying to stick through the mesh. You want to knock them out. Because every oyster that you have is one you can sell. What really determines your methodology for growing them is the environment that you're putting them into, the, the, the space you have available. Um, Space is generally determined on a first come first serve basis in towns where they have shellfish programs and you can lease bottom or license bottom as in the case of Stonington. It's been an increasingly popular way to make a living and so sometimes you have to do with what is available. This was the best gear for this type of location. Large oysters can live in a high energy area. They're um, heavier, if, you know, on the right bottom with enough water, they're not going anywhere. Baby oysters need, they, they can't be jostled and tossed around. Um, when you jostle them and toss them around, they tend to not feed. They'll close up and not feed. So this area was selected for the specific reason of, it's, it's a lower energy area, but it still gets water flow. The normal prevailing winds for here are out of the southwest. So they blow from the southwest up into that corner. And what it creates is it creates a wind-driven current flow that comes around in here and provides current and therefore food and oxygen to the baby oysters. So where they get planted is where we're gonna go next. And basically we're gonna show you what it looks like when they get to the next stage of their life, which is harvestable size and pre-harvestable size. This is an oyster dredge. It's a very simple one. It's a very light one. Um, I don't like digging into the bottom too much. Oysters live essentially on the top of the bottom, if that makes sense. And all this thing is, is basically a rake with a chain bag attached to it. So you drag this rake along the bottom. It's got little teeth on it. It scoops the oysters up. They fill up the bag and there you, that's how you retrieve them. There are parts you can, if you looked around this estuary and did a shore walk where you were able, you would find little patches of wild oysters that have, um, that are a direct result of either situations like this where nursery and uh, there's another farm in the area where they grow them on the bottom in here. And those oysters will go through a normal spawning cycle and they will release gamete into the water and those gametes will float, you know, they'll become larvae and float around here and settle on something and bang, you gotta, now you have, now you're bringing back an oyster population, you know, one, uh, an indigenous quintessential American species, you know. But to actually maintain and manage a population of a species that in a lot of these areas ha is gone. So the farmer actually acts as a restorer. Tons of things are attracted to the oyster beds. Juvenile fish, invertebrates, you know, invertebrates, that covers tons of stuff from shrimp, crabs, larval forms of other sea creatures. Um, they really are magnets for marine life. And again, you look at the history of oysters in the United States. They were, back when we had pristine environments and virgin areas, you know, in many estuaries, they were the bedrock species. They were the bedrock species. And they're not anymore, but you know, enough of us doing this in our little areas and we can kind of create these little micro environments where they are the bedrock species, where they are uh, islands of broader biodiversity and more biomass generally. We hope you enjoyed this segment. Thanks for joining us.